So the six. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is now 5.30, and I call the regular meeting of the Burnsville City Council to order. Would the city clerk please note for the record that Mayor Kautz is absent. She's traveling in Washington, D.C. with the U.S. Conference of Mayors. We'll begin our meeting with a moment of silence, a silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, and we invite you to join us. I will count off six seconds in honor of our six divisions of our military um, men and women serving our, our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight's meeting is being conducted both in person and online. Most council members and staff are in the council chambers. I believe we all are here. Members of the public may attend in person or the public can watch this meeting online at burnsvillemn.gov forward slash meetings or on Comcast cable channel 16 or 859 in high def. The public can also participate through Zoom by joining us at zoom.us forward slash join. More information is available in our meetings webpage and in the council agenda packet. First item on our agenda tonight is announcements and presentations. Um, first is announcements of upcoming meetings. Our regular council meetings are <clears throat> Tuesday, January 7th, 5.30, and Tuesday, January 21st at 5.30. Our work session will be Tuesday, February 14th at 5.30. Did I say February or January? On one of those? January. I think I, I'm sorry, correction. Those are all February dates. And we have a special once a year all day work session on Friday, February 3rd. We will be meeting at 9 a.m. at the Nicollet Inn boardroom. And unless otherwise noted, all meetings are here in our council chambers. Number two is citizen comments. This is an opportunity for anyone that would like to address the council on an item that is not in the printed agenda and not coming before us at a future meeting. Does anyone in the audience wish to address the council tonight? Seeing no one, I'll move on. Um, number three, additions to the final agenda. This is for emergency items that need immediate council attention or discussion. Does our staff have any additions to our final agenda? Nothing from staff, Mayor. Does council have any additions to the final agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on. Next up is our consent agenda. All items on our consent agenda are considered to be very routine and will be enacted by one motion. However, any item on our consent agenda may be removed from the uh, consent agenda for separate discussion and vote. Is there anyone from the public who wishes an item be removed from the consent agenda for separate discussion and vote? Seeing none, does staff wish to remove an item? Nothing from staff, Nothing. Mayor. Members of the council, any removals? Thank you very much. We have a motion to adopt our consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by <laughs> Council Member Gustafson, second by Council Member Workman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. And the motion passed. We move on to our regular agenda tonight. Our first item is authorization to submit application for the Partners in Energy program offered through Excel Energy. Tonight's presenting is a presenter is Carolyn McFadden, the City of Burnsville's Sustainability Coordinator. Ms. McFadden, the show is yours. Thank you, Acting Mayor. Um, so I'm Caroline McFadden, Burnsville's Sustainability Coordinator. I'm here with Marissa Bayer, the Partners in Energy Program Facilitator. We are here to talk about the Partners in Energy Program, which is an opportunity for the City of Burnsville to advance work related to energy efficiency, hopefully save us some money in the process, both within internal operations and the community as a whole. So I will hand it off to Marissa to give an overview of the Partners in Energy Program, and then I'll come in and talk about how this program fits within Burnsville's goals. 
Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Marissa Baer. I work for the Center for Energy and Environment, and I'm a facilitator with the Partners in Energy program. Welcome. Briefly for you, just what is Partners in Energy? It is a program from Excel Energy and a two-year collaboration between communities and the utility to develop and implement the community's individual energy plan goals. For communities who do participate, it is no cost to participate. However, we do ask for in-kind staff time to support the different phases of the process. Um, so working either closely with Caroline or other city staff here at Burnsville um, as you move through the program. This program is a really great opportunity for communities to participate, to engage stakeholders across different sectors. So think of residents, business, community, maybe education institution, rental property owners, to create goals and strategies related to energy efficiency and energy conservation, and then develop a work plan to make sure that those strategies are successfully <coughs> implemented. As you can see on the screen in front of you, the uh, kind of traditional two years, what we would typically see is about four to six months to actually create that energy action plan, followed by about 18 to 20 month implementation phase with direct support from partners in energy. And then beyond that, just continued implementation of that energy action plan where the partners in energy team is there to still support implementation, but may look a little bit different as communities develop capacity and expertise of their action plan during that initial 18 to 20 month phase. So how Partners in Energy supports communities, kind of three buckets of how we work with communities through this program. The first is that planning phase, that energy action planning development, where communities are able to create energy efficiency and conservation goals and strategies to engage their broader community. So traditionally looking beyond municipal enterprise and looking at how do you engage and work with other sectors of your community to be more energy efficient, save money on their energy bills. A key piece of this is action planning, so creating um, a plan for implementation where you've identified resources, timelines, and champions. So when you do start that implementation phase, you can really hit the ground running. And this is also a really great opportunity through the energy action planning process to just leverage any existing plans or goals that might exist in the community. So some communities come to us with an existing strategy or maybe some goals identified in a comprehensive plan or maybe a broader sustainability plan. So through this process, we can integrate those uh, existing goals or strategies as well. Following that action planning piece is implementation support. So in energy action planning phase, a facilitator like myself is working with a community to facilitate those workshops, go through that process. And then that same facilitator is then there for implementation support. And the primary ways that that facilitator in the program supports communities is first just through project management. So as communities create action plans, making sure that they stay on track to the, the timelines, those champions, those resources that have been, have been identified. Also marketing and outreach support so we work with communities to create co-branded materials to engage the community. That might be social media posts, maybe it's flyers, maybe it's postcards. So we have a team of designers who can create those materials um, and really make it look like uh, the community branding as well. And then finally, through implementation as well, we come in with an action plan, but also new resources, new ideas come forward. So that facilitation team is also there to support developing new ideas. A really great reference point is recently with the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. There's a lot of federal money coming towards energy efficiency projects. So we're, we're now working with communities to update some of their strategies to take consideration of this new uh, federal resource that's available. And then finally, throughout the whole process, is just data analysis. So during the planning phase where we work with communities, we bring in Excel Energy's consumption and program participation data to create a kind of comprehensive energy baseline to ensure that those strategies, those goals are data driven. Part of this as well is for communities like Burnsville who are served by more than one utility, we invite those utilities to participate not only in the planning workshops, but also to provide data as well. So we're able to analyze and present a holistic community energy use profile. This data, like I said, is informing goal setting, it's inform informing strategy development. And then when we get to that implementation phase, an important aspect is, you know, if, as you set goals, measure your progress towards the goals that you've set. So our team is there to help with that process as well. So setting up communities with measurable, actionable goals. And then during implementation, we provide biannual progress reports on data. So communities can track how they're doing through all of those imp that implementation work. And then if you need to correct course, our team is there to support it. Um, paired with this is that quantitative piece, I would like also just add the qualitative side as well of the impact of implementation and engagement in your community. So we're able to kind of pair both that quantitative and qualitative piece together for communities during that implementation reporting. So you can kind of tell the story beyond just the numbers to your broader community. So that's the information I have for you and I'll hand back over to Caroline. Yeah. 
So, okay. I have, I have just a quick question. A question. Do you do you uh, help cities identify and work with cities to uh, get grants for energy reduction? Yeah, so we, um, during that process, depending on strategies, we help connect communities with all the different resources available. <clears throat> so those facilitators also can serve as program experts. So we're learning about the IRA, other federal state incentives, so help connect communities if they're not already aware what opportunities do exist. Thank you. I have one question for you as well. Yes. I'm glad to see you're measuring it. Um, I'm curious, uh, I don't know if this is a, que a fair question for you, but how many cities does Excel serve and what is the total cost they're investing in this program to help cities? Um, so with permission, there are Excel Energy representatives in the audience, and if I could invite one of them to answer that specific question. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Tammy Gunderzik. I'm the program manager for Excel Energy for Partners in Energy. Um, currently, we serve approximately 40 communities across Minnesota and three in Wisconsin. Within Minnesota, of those 37 communities, we've got a budget of about 1.2 million that we put towards this program annually. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Are there any further questions before we move on? Anyone else? Council? Not yet. Thank you. So, like Marissa said, one of the really appealing things about this program is that it's really tailored towards the municipality that they're working with. Um, so Burnsville is really fortunate that not only is sustainability a strategic priority, but we already have many goals related to energy efficiency, renewable energy, and sustainable transportation in the 2040 Comprehensive Plan and the Sustainability Plan. Um, I won't go through them, but they are on this slide. Um, so we're really interested in joining the Partners in Energy program because we think that we can leverage the expertise of the energy planners and the facilitators like Marissa to help us identify these energy efficiency opportunities, help us prioritize them, and then help us create a roadmap for getting there that are specific to Burnsville's goals. Um, we see the Partners in Energy program as a good complement to our current plans. Our current plans tell us what we want to achieve, and the Partners in Energy program comes in and tells us how we get there, but then they off also offer that implementation support along the way. Um, additionally, with this municipality-specific approach, like Marissa mentioned, Excel is one of three utility companies that serve Burnsville, and we have a natural gas utility. This is a really unique opportunity to be able to bring everybody to the table so that we can have streamlined outreach to our residents and businesses so everybody knows the programs, the rebates, and the opportunities that are available to them. And lastly, in the long term, we think the ongoing support provided by the Partners in Energy program will help us as our community and, in our, and our efforts change. Uh, Partners in Energy facilitates community summits with all the municipalities that participate in the program, which is a really good place for Burnsville to share our successes, but most importantly, learn from the other municipalities as their energy programs grow and evolve. So that's a quick overview of the Partners in, Partners in Energy program. Uh, to participate in the program, we need to submit an application by this Friday, January 20th. We'd like your approval to submit the application and hopefully be chosen to be part of the next cohort of Partners in Energy municipalities. And with that, I will reopen it to any questions or comments. Council. Ms. Schultz. So I have a question. If you could go a slide or two back where it was showed. Sorry. <coughs> Only needed to go one back. My apologies. Um, okay, so on the reduced electricity use for the sustainability plan, you know, in the, in the 2030 um, community and city operations. So <coughs> what, what would that look like for residents? For reducing energy use? Yes. I mean, it could be 
any energy efficiency opportunity like installing LED light bulbs, could be fit switching fuel sources potentially. Um, it could be just uh, updating your, your boiler system, your, your HVAC system to a more efficient uh, model. Could be anything like that. Right, but what would get people to do that? Oh, it's usually a, a big motivating force is incentives. Um, so rebates that are offered through the utility companies. Uh, one of the good programs that Burnsville is participating in right now is the Home Energy Squad Energy Assessments. So that's where folks go through your home, tell you what you can do to make it more energy efficient, and then they tell you, you know, if there are some rebates that are offered for some of those measures. Um, so that's a really good example of how residents can take advantage of some of these opportunities. But they can only do it if they're aware of them. Correct. Yeah. Great, thank you. And if I may? Yeah. Uh, okay, so achieve 100% renewable energy use by 2030 for city operations. Could you more, could you define what you mean by city operations? Sure, so these are all in the sustainability plan that was adopted in 2020. So renewable energy use uh, could be on-site solar. You know, that's usually one of the things that people think of. But one of the things that the city is currently doing is participating in uh, Dakota Electric's Wellspring program, um, which then counts as renewable energy. That's where you're offsetting your electric use with renewable wind power. So that also helps us get closer to that goal. Right, but I mean, when we're talking about city operations, what are you including in that and what is not included in that? City operations is anything that it takes to light or heat and cool our city buildings and supply water. So it's our building lighting and cooling and then everything associated with pumping and treating the water. Okay, thank you. Because uh, I'm just pointing out, so when we're talking about city operations, what we're not talking about is we're not talking about our fleet. For this, Correct. For that one, for the yes. renewable energy, correct. Great, thank you. I just wanted to get that clarified <laughs> before we're getting questions about electric snowplows. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got it. Thank you. All right. That's good. Anyone else with questions? I just have one. Burnsville has had a pretty robust sustainability program and plan for quite some time. You did touch on a little bit this. If you would maybe expand on it a little bit more. Um, how will the Excel program advance us further than where we've gone on our own, put it that way? Yeah, so a lot of, especially the community, the goals that are related to commu reducing community energy use, that takes extreme amounts of education and outreach to reach the residents. Like I was saying earlier, you can only take advantage of these opportunities if you're aware of them. and. Burnsville is fortunate to have a full-time sustainability coordinator, but energy efficiency is also just one part of sustainability. And so to be able to have a team behind the sustainability coordinator that not only are experts in energy efficiency, they're experts in communicating energy efficiency to residents. They don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, they've been doing this program since 2014, so they have the resources available. And to be able to take that and work with our communications department to help it have the Burnsville look and feel mm -hmm. is going to help maximize like our staff time inefficiency. Sure. So I think that's one of the biggest things that this will help us do. Um, so maybe at a high level, we could say that Burnsville's sustainability program that we've had for quite some time deals a lot with our natural resources and the city facilities uh, itself, uh, in addition to educating the public. But we don't necessarily, to your point about it takes a lot of time, uh, incentives, and a lot of things to get to the general public to educate them and incent them to make 
some of the same moves that we may have already made, like going LED everywhere mm -hmm. right, or whatever. Um, that's where this program, uh, utilizing Excel investment, can provide additional marketing, communications, incentives, et cetera, to really move it beyond just our city facilities type of sustainability plan. Right? Exactly. And, and they're experts at facilitating workshops and getting the community <coughs> involved as well. So, yeah. Thank you. Staff, anybody else? Council, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Uh, Council, um, what's your thoughts? Do we have a motion to authorize applying for this program? I would move to authorize that apply, uh, application. Motion to apply? I will second and just, I guess, reiterate that it, it sounds like this isn't <clears throat> much different than the plans that we already have in place. <clears throat> but we now have an opportunity to come to the table with our energy partners and make one big cohesive plan together with uh, the entities that really matter. So I will second that motion. Motion by Councilmember Gustafson, second by Councilmember Workin. Any further discussion? Uh, I'll just comment that um, it has no cost to us. Um, it is funded by through the current revenues that um, Excel um, takes in and turns some of that investment back out to incent and motivate and get uh, uh, you know, savings, uh, sustainability into their uh, their guest list or client list. So uh, we're just participating in that. So I, I don't see any downside to it. Let's put it that way. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have a presentation. This is Experience Burnsville, <coughs> excuse me, Experience Burnsville Annual Update and marketing plan and we have Amy Burrell, Experience Burnsville Executive Director will be presenting and she's bringing a guest, a special guest with her too. Yes, correct. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Um, joining me this evening is Jody Trost with uh, Mercury Creative Group. They are our marketing partner. Um, is this ready to go then? I think. Yeah, looks ready. Um, they are our marketing um, partner, and we started working with Mercury Creative um, in probably 2013 or 2012 originally, and then um, we just re-engaged with their organization again in late 2022. So. Um, Got some exciting things in the works that um, are kind of hot off the press that are, were in your background information as it relates to our brand and our visitor um, profile. But um, Jody and I will kind of cover um, a few things with you this evening, including um, who we are as an organization. Um, I'll touch on some highlights. Not quite ready. Make it big. Oh, sorry. Krista to the rescue. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> back to the <coughs> overview. Um, who we are as an organization, we'll touch on some highlights um, of 2022. We had some recovery, which was very nice and refreshing for the tourism and hospitality industry. And then we'll um, review our objectives and strategies and our budget for 2023. Jody will help cover um, marketing the destination. And then we'll both be available for questions um, from the council. So who we are as an organization, Experience Burnsville, the Burnsville Convention and Visitors Bureau was founded in 1987 for the purposes of marketing and promoting Burnsville to potential visitors. We are governed by a nine member board of directors who are all volunteers from the community and or the hospitality and tourism industry. And we currently have one staff member. Um, some information that we worked on with Mercury Creative late last year was updating our mission and our vision statement. So our new our mission statement is Experience Burnsville enhances the appeal of travelers, I'm sorry, the appeal to travelers by promoting and marketing local establishments through partnerships. And the vision of our organization is that Burnsville will be a vibrant destination for travelers to come to and stay and return year after year. Few key highlights from 2022. 
too. Um, some things that I covered when I was here actually in December of 2021 um, that I shared with the council that were some of our goals internally as an organization. One of those was our website. We really wanted to drive more traffic to our website, which we really did achieve this year. We had a nice 81% increase. Um, we do have some things that we do want to work on and improve on our website, including bounce rate and um, time on our site. But we um, really did drive more visitation with our paid and organic um, outreach. So that was a key thing for our organization. Another one was in getting our um, occupancy at our hotel motels up. We have nine hotel properties in our community representing close to 850 hotel rooms. Um, in 2021, we were at 49.6% occupancy. This year, we had a goal of 60%, and we are currently at 60.1%, so we hit our goal. Um, we do still, we're still waiting for um, our December numbers to come in, and we do get those numbers through Smith Travel Research, or CoStar, which they're currently known as. And another th great thing for our organization and for our hotel community, more importantly, is they've seen an increase in their average daily rate and their occupancy, which meant an in revenue increase for their organizations, but then it also meant an increase for our organization. So we're getting closer to those 2019 um, revenue numbers that we were at. So we're approximately 8% off of where we're at in 2019. So that's really refreshing and exciting as we look for um, 2023 and dialing in our new um, marketing um, brand and promotions. And then um, one goal that we had last year was expanding our outreach again to driving traffic to our overnight visitors and you know, kind of looking outside of the Burnsville area. So we really focused on targeting um, those that were out 250 miles from the Burnsville area again driving that visitorship and our social media engagement we had a goal of increasing it by 20 percent but we were in the 15 14 percent with our um, Facebook and Instagram so we have some great goals with Mercury Creative on how we can work on doing that um, more so with paid a uh, paid approach for 2023 versus the organic approach that we had last year a lot of our money we did last year we invested into our website we began the process, planning process for 2023 um, with our executive committee, which we have our chairperson, Skip Neenhouse, in the audience. I also want to say um, thank you to Carissa Larson with Burnsville City staff and Council Member Dan Gustafson for serving on our board of directors. So we, the executive committee started planning in the early months of the summer, knowing that we had a planning retreat with our full board of directors in um, August of last year, at which time we reviewed our strategies, our budget, and our marketing. And then at our October meeting, we, um, the board of directors approved our plan and budget. In October at that time, you'll probably see in your background information, we have a fairly um, conservative budget as it relates to the revenue. We had two hotels that were entering um, that they were going to be for sale. Um, we still don't know the final outcome of the two properties that were for sale, but um, we weren't sure, you know, the outcome of that. So we did kind of approach our budget with a more conservative um, number for 2023, um, kind of not understanding. But we are very optimistic for recovery as we enter this new year and will continue to be flexible and nimble. And then, as I had mentioned earlier, we engaged with Mercury Creative in October. And they will be, instead of us hiring staff this year, they will be an extension of our organization as we move forward with our marketing initiatives and our day-to-day -day activity. The objectives that the board um, approved was to promote Burnsville as a year-round destination, highlighting our shoulder and off-peak season. That's that September through March um, when travel is historically slower. We really want to see what we can do to drive traffic to help fill, help fill hotel rooms during that time. And that our organization will continue to be the destination leader in marketing and management for the city of Burnsville. Um, we're best at storytelling, so we want to continue sharing um, all the great stories that Burnsville has to offer um, in our local establishments. And we want to maintain our um, organizational capacity for the future. Some of the strategies that go along with those objectives that will promote different activities and events, again, promote our partners in hospitality and tourism, and that will all be done through our marketing efforts, organic and paid. 
will represent Burnsville's interest in tourism and hospitality organizations and events. And then we want to be supportive of any um, enhancements of a community amenities that impact hospitality and tourism, whether that be lodging or destination attraction. And then, as I mentioned, we'll continue our storytelling with the help of Mercury Creative and their um, great team that they have behind them. And then as far as our future, we want to be able to sure that we can preserve our reserve funds, maintain our office space. We recently moved into new, a new office at the Better Business Bureau, so that's more conducive for a one-person staff. And we moved in along with um, the Chamber of Commerce and the SCORE office. We want to continue to have our presence in the community, our marketing initiatives, and then our staff. Um, where does our funds, uh, where does our money come from, our funds? We are funded almost entirely through local lo option lodging tax through um, Minnesota State Statute 469.190. We do have the opportunity to apply for grants through Explore Minnesota Tourism, so we're always looking for those um, opportunities to take advantage of, and we all, will be investing some of our savings as we move forward into 2023. The funds will be used again for our marketing campaigns and promotions and to maintain our organization and our staff. And I will turn things over to Jody and she can talk a little bit about marketing the destination. Sure. Thank you for having me. Um, like Amy said, um, we started working together in October to really define and redefine Experience Burnsville's audience. And really our goal is to have visitors come to the city, stay in hotels, eat at restaurants, shop in the stores. Um, we found that visitors um, usually aren't coming to Burnsville for the first time. Burnsville feels very comfortable for them. It feels familiar. They have their favorite place that they stay, their favorite restaurant. They're coming to see family for a wedding. They're coming for a hockey tournament. There's a gathering or a community that brings them to town. Um, so we really want to focus our story on those repeat visitors and reminding them Burnsville is a great place to come back and stay again and again. Um, like Amy said, we'll be her marketing partner this year. So we're meeting on a monthly basis to plan organic and paid online campaigns. So Google ads, social media, really driving visitors to the website to book their stay, discover their next choice of place to eat or shop. Um, and next, we'll be working through the website so that users have that experience and it's easy for them to find that great hotel with the pool where their grandkids can come and swim while they're staying in town, things like that. Um, so we'll be doing that throughout the year, a lot of online work, website work, and really just taking that brand story through all marketing materials throughout the website, online and print. And with that, we are available for questions. Councilmember Gustafson. Um, first of all, it's, it's been a privilege working with Experience Burnsville all these years. It's, uh, the growth has been tremendous considering the lack of revenue that you've had to work with the last few years. But I, I think it would be important to point out to uh, our citizens and our businesses that we promote Experience Burnsville promotes businesses in the city itself. We promote retail. We promote restaurants at no charge to our to our businesses in the city. And I think that just adds a value to being here as a, as a business in the city. And I, I wanted to point that out. And thank thank you. you for doing that. And I, the videos are always fun to watch. Yeah, thank you very really much. Good. That's a, a key thing to what we are always. Um, we're always we're information seekers. So I'm always looking for details, you know, what events happening, what new stores opening, um, what new restaurants coming to town. So um, I'm always, the more information we have, the better we can market and promote Burnsville. And there's no such thing as too much information in our world. We'd rather know every detail than not have enough detail to promote. Anyone else? Uh, well, it's very clear that hotels equals CVB revenue. Um, you actually are investing in driving traffic to help restaurants and uh, performing arts centers and other attractions, um, but your funding comes strictly from one source, and that's the hotel lodging tax. So 
Um, good to see that some of those numbers are recovering, and hopefully they continue to do so. In 2023, it's been a rough run for hotels, as you mentioned. A couple of hotels went on the for sale block. Uh, there's a large hotel in downtown, the Hilton, that's uh, up for auction, and it's really um, that's a, a hotel I've been at conventions at for 20 years, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, it hurts to see hotels of that size, and even two in Burnsville that. Uh, and hopefully the new owners are able to come in and and uh, bring in some fresh investment, fresh ideas, and, and uh, keep those hotels going. Mm -hmm. I'm curious how, as a CVB, um, given that hotels use a lot of SEM and digital ads to drive and portals to drive traffic to their site, right, for reservations and all the Travelocity and uh, Hotels.com, et cetera, there's a litany of places that, right, can uh, drive traffic to the hotels. How do you specifically work with those hotels? to be able to help support getting them reservations, right, through your efforts? We, we currently, um, we recently added a book now um, button to our hotel listings, to our hotel pages, which goes to the res reservation systems on the hotel pages if they have one available. If they don't, we're, we're trying to find the best solution to be able to direct guests to be able to book a hotel um, the easiest way without um, with minimal fees. Um, the majority of our hotels have some type of um, reservation or booking portal that we've been able to tap into. And um, something that Jody and her team are working on is adding that into our messaging moving forward, um, you know, kind of leading with all the activities and amenities that our hotels have to offer mm -hmm. um, to really appeal to our visitor that we're trying to attract to Burnsville. So it's a, a more layered approach now than um, what we've done in the past, which I, I think is really exciting. Um, and it's great to have Mercury along with that. And that, yeah. you know, between all of us kind of brainstorming, it was a good idea to come up with because the last couple of years has been very challenging for our hotels, but yeah. it's also been challenging for our organization, and we lost our staff. So, mm -hmm. um, so well, it's a more layered approach. But if you have anything to add to that as well, yeah, I was going to say it's something we're trying this month. It'll probably be up in the next week. Is a blog that drives to the reservation, so that we can see. Then we'll have some measurements of who's clicking on which links to book and just learning more about user behavior and then we can adjust. You know, would you say that in a in a way what you're what you're building is is a, it's another portal to get at our hotels, but it's specifically our hotels, right, in Burnsville? Yes. Um, and so obviously you want to snag the traveler uh, mm -hmm. to your website to then bring them to our hotel so they can look at the selection and make a choice. Mm -hmm. and, and book hopefully, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? No. Council Member Workman. Thank you, and thank you for a good, very good uh, presentation. Amy, I'm just wondering um, if the board or <coughs> any of you have had any discussions about um, reaching audiences who maybe aren't speaking English as their first um, language. I just notice um, a lot of the new restaurants that are coming up in Burnsville seem to be international. Um, we're seeing them everywhere. Um, has that something that you all have discussed at any point along the way? Yes, yes. <laughs> I think it will. Um, as we work through the website, we're definitely going to talk about accessibility. Um, and there's some elements that we could add um, that would just address accessibility across the board from different languages to um, font size so it's easier for folks to read. Um, and that really, the restaurant piece um, is so important because that is the variety of that is really what makes Burnsville unique, and we want to highlight that. I think we were the first one to get a Venezuelan restaurant, and I don't know if it was in the state, but um, I stopped in there a couple weeks ago, and it was really good. So, okay. um, and then I did. I don't want to. We don't have to go line by line on your budget, mm -hmm. but the only thing that jumped out on me <clears throat> was the um, the board of directors line item seemed to pop up. A little bit more was there in, I don't know if that question is even appropriate for this right now but was there some movements with the board yes um, so the board of directors um, wanted to be more active and engaged out in the community in 2023 
one thing that um, what we were missing as an organization was um, the community connectivity and our outreach um, having lost two staff through the pandemic and then um, not being able to get out as much um, the board w wants to be out visiting the attractions um, we're going to host our meetings at various locations in Burnsville this year um, maybe some of the locations that are outside of Burnsville but our major tourist um, destination driving for Burnsville um, and so we understand that that will take some investment on our side to host meetings and to have uh, to enter not entertain the board but meeting expenses if you will um, so that's where you see that increase in that line item um, 824 so yeah that is a good question travel yes. and expenses and things yeah okay yep yeah it's all related to the board engagement with um, some of our major attractions we have someone from the Minnesota Zoo and so we're wanting to do an outing at the Minnesota Zoo we're not sure what that's going to look like yet or when but we wanted to make sure that the board and the organization has the resources available and then when we're there we'll take video and photos that we can then per repurpose on our social media our website create a reel you know so we're kind of dual purpose if you will will you ask them if we can get the zoo mobile back at fire muster this year i will ask if we can get Thank the zoo mobile fire muster <laughs> yes at the, at the festival we'll take a we've done that already <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry it's still aren't, aren't, aren't too. Yeah. Liaison to that festival? <laughs> yeah but they've booked an annual thing every year on that saturday when we had that zoo mobile a couple years ago it was a absolute hit but mm -hmm. I'll make a call tomorrow it's besides the point thank you okay. very much you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> the kids corner is always looking for some new great interactive things for kids okay oh but I have it noted as well <laughs> any other qu any other uh, Hello, questions by council any okay. open to the staff any questions Domino. well um, yes. we basically uh, just formally adopt um, these the convention and visitors bureau uh, annual uh, budget and marketing uh, plan uh, may I have a motion to approve the 2023 strategic and marketing plan and budget. So moved. I second. second that. Oh, third, third that. Moved by commission <laughs> council member, not commissioner, <laughs> council member Schultz, second by council member Gustafson. All in favor? Mm. Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amy and Judy, nice to meet you and thank you. look forward to the hopefully things getting better and yes. better thank you very we need much. the mercury rising in 2023 yes no more dad jokes okay. he's, a, he's a grandpa now those are grandpa uh, is this a progressive commercial i'm sorry um item 5c ordinance adopting revisions to the city code title 3 chapters 29 through 32 <clears throat> presenting tonight is our city clerk, Mac Collins. Thank you. Acting Sorry, Mayor. I did say Mac instead of Michelle. That's okay. Is that okay? That's fine. All right. Um, our, we do have the amended code in your council packets, and along in the background is noted all the significant changes. I stand for any questions. Council, okay. there's a lot of red and green it's a very Christmassy in this uh, edited version uh, council member Schultz okay so on the I believe it's a section on mobile vending uh, so it'll be under the other general licensing requirements 3-30 on page, page 95 of our packet no oh, page six of, of that but yeah, 90 but page seven or page our, seven sorry yep. and 95 of the so as we we go down the sections and I'm and appreciating that um, on the former page all of that is redlined and removed and then this is the new concise language on there there's just a couple things I have a question on it um, uh, letter C for vendors or units selling food such locations shall have known facilities for restrooms so if a food truck is out parked somewhere 
we're requiring them to know that people have access to a bathroom? That, it, to my recollection, that line item was not addressed by the code review task force. It was merely moved from the one section to the other. Okay. That is something that I would have a question on. Um, because I do see food truck operators, you know, like they'll be parked somewhere and like I don't know that the area they're in that is they're opening their bathroom to the general public. Right. So I think yeah, that might be an unrealistic <laughs> expectation for that. Um, on H, mobile vending vehicles, trailers or carts shall be not stored outside and visible on any residential property. Storage on commercial or industrial property shall comply with all zoning requirements. Um, some of our vendors, um, when they're storing them for a season, they're storing them, but when they're parking them overnight, it's similar to how we let people park like they're their smaller RVs and trailers and that type of thing. So I have a question on that one. What item is that or what H. letter? H. H, okay. And then on I, to protect pedestrian safety, mobile vending vehicles and trailers shall have customer window or access point facing the curb. I know for a fact when we have our city festival and we have the street kind of closed, they are not facing the curb. They are facing in towards the street because we have people that's, that's, true. that's our area. So I have a question on that one. Uh, and then all, J, all mobile vending vehicles, trailers and carts shall be self-contained which I agree with, they should be able to be self-contained. There should be no cords or other utility hookups or exterior hazards to the public. Again, I note when we do our festival and that type of stuff, they have cords, they have generators, they have all of that type of stuff. So I have a question with that one as well. So those are, those are that's the only area of this that of, of all the, because they did a lot of work. <laughs> they did a lot of work, which is great. Um, I just think we have some um, leftovers from the past maybe that we can just clean up. Um, I mean, I, I would get rid of C. I don't, I don't see having that as a requirement. Like that's a nice thing, but that's, that's mm -hmm. not a requirement, especially since the building code in 2022 was revamped even for a retail, like retail does not need to provide a bathroom unless they have three employees on duty at the same time. So, you know, we're putting them to a higher standard than even a retail store. Um, so I would nix that. Um, I think H needs to be cleaned up and I'm open to suggestions on that. Um, H maybe, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go for it. We can we can hit H and then move on. Well, if we do, we want to council. Do we want to try and resolve these tonight or send it back through the process? Oh, well, we should do it here. Yeah, they don't send it back to work. them again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I get what you're saying on that, but yeah. My suggest. Well, I don't know about C, but I'll go to um, City Manager Lindbergh. Uh, Mayor, I'll let the council continue. Okay. Um, we could talk. I think we should talk about C. Um, I agree. It's it's a it was in the old and it's in the new but um, there are private property owners who are allowing or leasing space for a food truck on their property and in some cases they have a public restroom in some cases it's an office building that's not accessible to the public so they wouldn't have access right. to a restroom um, on H I think a simple except for special events um, adding to that would would get us around the the issue of of the facing Sorry. Um, um, I and the J. I. Sorry, I. I, and I meant J. I, yep. Mm -hmm. um, I got to circle the right one here. There we go. I think you could say the same for J then, too. Yes. Yeah, electrical cords, except. Is it right. the fest? Uh, yep. We have. Brinsville Festival, we have many electrical cords running. Did you say Brinsville Festival? I did. Thank you very much. <laughs> So I and J may be, uh, Council Member Schultz, those uh, reasonable resolutions to make that language a little yeah. better. Yeah, I, I think so. Does, Joel, do you have any? 
disagreement on that or no I think that's fine Mac does. the Maine. only thing I was thinking about is we do have sometimes have vendors that also park in private parking lots yes they do and then they should not again not be curb facing Right, right, exactly. They, they would be parking lot faced, right? Mm -hmm. right. So maybe we oh, should right. just remove that completely. I don't see any. It, the only problem would be is if they were curb facing where people were walking up into the street to get to them. That's the only reason it's there, yes. is to keep people from having to walk into the street to access the, the vendor. Yep. It feels like a common sense thing, but. Right. It's still got to be some yeah. council member Augustus. Yeah, could it be something in a in a safe manner that doesn't interfere with traffic kind of thing because the, the, the customers do not interfere with the normal flow of yeah exactly traffic, of traffic so public I mean, safety you're going to be street facing at festivals you're going to be curb facing if you happen to take one of the parks then you're going to just go sell out a park and you're not going to put it in the street so I mean, you just decide where, where you're going to park on that on, on the restroom thing uh, i don't know that we need the restrooms either the food trucks at least the trucks have to have water. They have to have yes. sinks for washing their hands. I mean, they, they, they have to have all that for safety reasons. And so if a customer needs to use the bathroom, maybe they should go to the bathroom before they go to that food truck and order some food. <laughs> um, so, well, we'll go. We'll but, go but I did want to add one more thing on the overnight parking. I want to remind everyone we did have a food truck blow up in a neighborhood in Lakeville a few years back. And, and that was a residential area that took out some properties out there. I'm sure that was a safety issue. Those, those things are all propane and that stuff didn't get shut down properly. Things can happen. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Lindbergh. Uh, Mayor, Council Members, uh, to Council Member Gustafson's point, uh, if the Council's desire would be to make significant modifications to H, I, or J, um, I would ask that you give me the opportunity to go back to both police and fire and review it with them uh, before you approve. I think I think that's acceptable. Do do you have what are concerns on? Do you feel confident on that, and that you can relay that and discuss that with them? Uh, certainly, I do. If there's something that you would like to add, or the council would like to add, uh, obviously feel free. But uh, I would just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything mm -hmm. uh, in terms of advising the council. I, I don't have anyone here tonight uh, to be able to address those specific concerns. Yeah, I don't. I don't see a problem no. with okay. that. Uh, does the council agree that uh, item C, requiring that restrooms can be removed? I think We're so. In, we yeah. have consensus for removing item yeah. C. Yeah, that's, yeah. And that would just be a, it would come back without being there, but, um, or it'd be redlined and remain in the red line copy. And then I, uh, sorry, H, I, and J would be uh, run through staff of public safety to come back with some new language and any concerns they have. That would be great. Okay. I don't mean to delay the process anymore. I want to be as efficient as possible, but I also okay. want to make sure that actually, I'm not missing. Actually, your way is actually efficient. Taking yeah. it back to the to the group and having them go through it once more and then come back is that would be my concern with that yeah. too. Is that would be that the end of summer? Push us out two months. Off, so, no, I think I think that's absolutely acceptable. All right, then we will. So I. No, let's go ahead. Sorry, oh Vince, no, you're good. I apologize. Um, <clears throat> is is like the. The hot dog cart in the same category here, or are we really focusing on, you know, the, the self-propelled food truck? I believe it includes the I think the it's all encompassing. Yeah. So even the, guy the licensed truck, even the licensed carts have to have water. Yeah. They do? Yeah. Yes, they it's do. A health, it's a health thing. So even if they're just they selling they popcorn, they got to have water. And that's a state. It, that's a state thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Then we'll, um, Council Member Schultz. Okay. My suggestion would be to table or continue the matter to the next yes. council meeting, and we'll have staff recommended language back. We won't take it back to the code review task force, but we'll get a revised version to you with the changes that the council has directed tonight. All right, move to table until the staff can get back to us with the revisions. Second. second. Motion to table by <laughs> council member Gustafson, second by council members Schultz. <laughs> Excuse me. All in favor? Aye. 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 And nay. Any opposed? No. Motion carries forward. Thanks, Council. Item 5D. <coughs> Excuse me. Meeting of the Economic Development Authority. Uh, I will now recess the Burnsville City Council. Thank you, Acting Mayor Keeley, and good evening. I call the Economic Development Authority to order. Will the clerk please note that Commissioner Couts is absent? And we want to move on to item number one. Are there any additional additions to the final agenda? 
Seeing none, I'll move on. And item two is election of officers. So this is where the meeting once a year where we elect our slate of officers for the next year. And I open the floor for any nominations. Um, I would make the motion to keep everything as is. Motion to keep everything as is. Do I have a second? Second. Second? All right. I guess we can call the vote then. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? They. And it passes. We keep the slate for 2023. Number Item number three is approval of the minutes. Is there anyone wishes an item to be removed from the consent agenda for a separate discussion and vote? No. No? No? Nothing. All right. Then I may have a motion for the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Motion from Commissioner Keeley. Second. Second from Commissioner Workman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And consent agenda pa uh, passes. Item number 3A is the adoption of the annual report. Michelle Collins, our city clerk, is presenting. Thank you, President Gustafson and commissioners. Um, we did have only four meetings at the EDA in 2022, and that has been recapped in the annual report as presented in the background. I stand for any questions. Are there any questions? Okay, may I have a motion to adopt the report? So moved. Motion by second. Commissioner Schultz, second by Commissioner Keeley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And it passes. There is no other business. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Commissioner Keeley, motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Commissioner Workman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned back to you, Acting Mayor Keeley. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. There are no other items on our agenda tonight. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn the Burnsville City Council. So moved. Okay. Moved by Gustafson, second by Schultz. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Aye. And the motion carries. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. The mayor will be back in town for the next meeting, I believe. In February. <laughs> Have a great night. Yeah.